All right. Shall we do our roll, roll call? Um, and I'm sorry that you have to remind me this every time. Do we say our addresses as well or just people who are? No. Okay. Um, Katie Reese here. Kent Hutchinson. Present. We see you. Um, Mr. Brian Johnson. Okay, Sadie I don't Wilson. hear. I'm sorry. Oh, Sadie Wilson. Okay, uh, we'll. Oh, okay, Sadie Wilson. Excellent. Uh, Chuck Yang. Here. And Alex Zacharias. Zach Zacharias present. Dang, I do that every time. I'm sorry, okay. Zacharias. Um, we just heard from Sadie Wilson, Beth Kowalski. Yes. Yep. Yep. I'm here. <laughs> present. Thank you, Rizel Puguero Almonte. No. Okay. Nope. Okay. And Timothy Perlowitz. No. Okay. Well, that is the roll call of the members and liaisons. Moving on to item C. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? Motion to approve the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? OK. Sounds like the agenda is approved. Motion D, or item D, uh, approval of minutes from the July 26, 2023 meeting. Motion to Motion approve. To approve. Oh. Second. Second. Excellent. Thank you both for your enthusiasm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. All opposed? Also great. Super. That brings us to regular business. Laura, would you like to give an introduction? <clears throat> uh, yes. Regular business item one, uh, consideration with possible action on the City of Green Bay Public Art Grant application from Sage Community Studio. Um, Kind of a little bit of an overview of our grant program. The grant program is funded by American Rescue Plan Act dollars. Um, funds are dedicated to artists, artist teams, creatives, uh, organizations in the community using um, using that support to fund presentations, performances, uh, research, creation, all sorts of good stuff for Green Bay. Um, applicants are eligible to receive a one-time no match required payment, uh, ranging from $2,500 to $10,000 max. Um, again, no match requirement, and it is able to fully fund a project. Um, the applicant, Stacey Von Bush, on behalf of SAGE, who is here with us this morning uh, in person, um, is proposing a project titled SAGE Community Studio. Uh, the project is focused on funding the rent of the studio space um, that they currently reside in, where they offer a number of free programming throughout the year, uh, including but not limited to one night studio, oops, sorry, open studio nights, uh, one night only exhibits and creatively engaged community. Um, the applicant is requesting $9,600 for the, your rent. Um, we do have the applicant here, so if we want to open the floor. Brian Johnson is joining Brian Johnson is joining uh, Motion to open the floor. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The floor is open. Which means that people from the community can speak. Get the table. You come hang out at the table. And if you can state your names and for the record. Sure. Uh, so my name is Stacey Von Bush. As of 2017, I am the founder of SAGE, which stands for Share, Accept, Grow, and Encourage. Uh, I believe about half the room is pretty well versed um, in what we do. Uh, Stacey, a... could you also state your address, please, for the record? Address as in president. As in where you live. Oh, I live in Pulaski, Wisconsin, actually. Um, we serve the greater Green Bay area. Our studio is located in uh, downtown. Stacey, sorry, yeah. you need to, uh, for the record, you need to say your full address. My physical address? Oh, you guys yes. are? Yes. Uh, 218 South St. Augustine Street, Apartment A, Pulaski, Wisconsin, 54162. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, go ahead. And uh, I am Xavier Hortman. My address is 3210 Jonas Circle, Oneida, Wisconsin, 54155. Thank you. Awesome. Thank, thank you both. Right. You guys are really formal. 
that bureaucratic uh, system. Um, so basically, uh, Laura came to me a couple months ago, um, expressed that SAGE should apply, um, whether it be a program or a project um, for this funding. Um, we are a registered 501c3. We are about 50% self-funded. We don't go after dollars like this very often, to, to be honest. Um, however, our programs in our studio have greatly expanded and our community reach has done so as well. Uh, that being said, when I talked to Laura, uh, the, the biggest thing is the studio. I can't execute community outreach programming. We can't offer free services. We can't um, educate and mentor on a peer-to-peer -peer level with artists without having a home base. And so that's what we apply for. Our rent is $800 a month. That does cover rent and utilities. That amount does not cover the insurance that we pay to be in that facility. When an artist brings in their art, uh, first of all, we do not charge a jury fee for any of our calls for art. We do not take a commission if art is sold in our studio. We believe that's a key point in artist advocacy. We also ensure the art. The minute it's on our property, if anything happens to it, we cover it. Um, so it does not have that amount attached to it. Uh, a really valuable program that has tremendously taken off for us um, is Open Studio. Formerly, we refer to that as a uh, creative community. What that is, is we ask the community to donate art supplies. We sort them, we put them on the shelves, and absolutely anyone from the community can come in and make use of it. As of right now, we are open once a month, the third Tuesday of every month. We are consistent with that. All of our programs at this time are completely volunteer run. So none of my request covers any type of overhead in that regard. Uh, additional programs that we've launched recently include a music support group. Where musicians can come in, learn from each other. We have a consistent um, opportunity for artists to reach out to us in regards to a mentorship when it comes to how do I price my art? Where do I set up? What are good shows? That's really the backbone of how Sage got its start to begin with, was being a, a source of, of outreach for the artists themselves. Um, recently, we've expanded our programming to community outreach. Uh, it's called Creatively Engaged Community. We were partially funded um, by the Green Bay Community Foundation to start this program, where we go into additional nonprofits in our community. You can hand those out. That's just a list of what's going on for the rest of the year. Um, we go out into nonprofits, bring an artist, and we, we ask two questions. What is it you want to say and how do you want to say it? We simply believe that art has an opportunity to serve as a voice to absolutely anyone in our community. And it also has a creative opportunity to share a demographic in a way that only art could do. So we recently wrapped up with a Spiro. That was just last week. Uh, before that, we did a four-week project with Casa Alba Melanie. So, for example, what happens now from a studio perspective is on September 8th and 9th, we will host an exhibit for Casa Alba Melanie and the 44 pieces of art that landed in my studio as of last night. Um, on September 8th, there will be a private showing specifically for the elder population that we served through those classes to come in, see their art on the walls, and celebrate their accomplishments. And September 9th, we are open to the public. Every time we are open to the public, it comes at no charge. We don't even ask for donations. We don't even put a dollar amount to walk through the door. Uh, we believe that accessibility is incredibly important when it comes to um, those type of programs. We will do the same thing for Aspiro. As of September 30th, we will have an exhibit of 25 pieces of art from 25 different uh, disabled artists in our community. Um, Xavier handed out, just because I wanted you to see, in addition to our monthly scheduled programming, we have eight one night only art exhibits scheduled between now and the end of the year. Good time to reemphasize that this is all volunteer work and yeah. we have zero employees. Is involved. there any way that we could see the materials that have been submitted? Or is there is there like an electronic form that could come to um, I did this on the fly. I can read it, but I can absolutely submit it. I mean, do you want me to see it? Uh, you, just, you just said it's the eight uh, one night only exhibits and yep. list those. Yeah. Okay. That's. Yeah. We're going to scan it and email it out to you right now. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So just to go over the balance of 2023, as I already covered, September 8th and 9th, Casa Alba Melanie. September 30th, Aspiro. Uh, October 14th, what we do for artists is we offer the opportunity to host solo exhibits. We, we don't charge them 
to use our studio, if they want to host a solo exhibit, if they want to host an exhibit where they curate it, um, we don't charge. November, Oneida Arts is coming in. So the first week of November, um, they're going to do an exhibit. The second week, we have a solo exhibit of Stos Neptune. Stos is a client with Aspiro. Um, if anybody follows us on social media, uh, he creates illustrations, and I will pass this around, um, based on, first of all, Stos is nonverbal autistic. So for him to have an opportunity to have his art showcased in the community, he needs an advocate. And we put this zine together. Yep. He and I put this zine together and so sold this at the Green Bay Public Library this previous Saturday and, and was elated. Um, one of the really amazing things that, that we're able to do is invite these individuals to feel like they're just as much a part of the arts community as anybody else is. Um, so I will pass this around. Stos will have a solo show because we found out through the process of working with him that Stos himself is a member of the Oneida Nation. Uh, November 18th, we will have two more Oneida artists, Scott and Rodney Hill, will do. Yep, go ahead. So that's one that I'm actually curating, and Scott and Rod Hill are my uncles. Um, I grew up in an arts environment because of them. Uh, my parents weren't artists, but having them around in my life influenced me and and so actually, so uh, my one uncle, Rodney Hill, some of you may be familiar with Scott Hill. He's a pretty accomplished artist from what I know. And uh, so he has a brother, Rodney Hill, who is just as talented of an, of an artist as Scott is. He hasn't pursued it as hard. He hasn't gone for it as as avidly in, all in the community in the same way that Scott has, but he has the same level of talent as Scott does. He recently had a son pass away this year of an overdose in June. Or no, excuse me, April. And uh, and so as a means of finding a way to find, you know, help him find some solace and find an outlet, some of his expression, I thought that a split show with his other artist brother curated by me and hosted by Sage is, uh, is a nice outlet that we can offer, you know. And so this is, you know, obviously she's going to continue and keep going, but you see a big list here and you see a big list of events and that's great and the volume of it is awesome, but the impact within each individual event that you're looking at on this list is immense. Like you look at that list and what is the actual verbiage? It says exhibit of Scott and Rodney Hill. But now you know what that actually is. It's not just an exhibit. It's not just two native artists. There's so much more reasoning behind it than is on the surface. And that goes for every single thing that we do. I mean, I don't know what the allotted time for something like this is, but we could dive in like this to everything. She bypassed the music group. You know how many people that are finding something or finding a space or finding a place to be and are showing up to this music group already? A husband that just moved into the area that doesn't really have an outlet. He's never been here before, but he makes music, so he showed up to that. Now he has a little bit of a sense of community. Of community. Uh, somebody who came straight from guitar lessons, picked up a guitar a year ago. This is needing an entry point. A friend of mine who is a, has a significant other who is a really out there popular artist, and he's able to find something now in this music group that fulfills his, his element instead of just supporting her all the time. And so, you know, I'll let her continue, but, you know, this list is more than just a list of things that we do. Every single one of these things is immensely impactful, maybe not to a giant volume of people, but isn't it sure nice to provide an outlet to a husband that just moved to the area? from the Twin Cities and give him something to do. Isn't it nice to have somebody in the community who buried a son this year, have an artistic creative outlet? And all of these things are here because of us. Yeah. I, and this goes away if we go away. So I have a question. So that like the music group you're talking about, is that something that like is advertised? Not like I would see it, oh, there's this music group that meets whatever and then I, I would just show up there and- Exactly. Okay, cool. yep. mm -hmm. It's very, it's actually very informal. I'm the one that leads it. Okay. Um, but it's like it's someone from the, like the public can show up. Absolutely. Okay. We put posters all over town about, or did we do the posters for that one? Uh, that no. one was an organic growth. A lot of okay. what we do because we're so intentional with providing a safe space for these creatives that our advertising has to be incredibly purposeful and oftentimes a little bit on the slow side just because we want to make sure the, the individuals why they want to be there matches the environment of a safe space to create. 
That's very important. That is something that we have built over the last six years. We've had individuals come and go. There is no membership to be a part of Sage for that very reason. You can come and go. As an artist, you can choose what it is that you want to participate in because what we look to serve is being that home for artists in our community. And what we've ended up doing when, when we have all these conversations centered around creating an arts and culture environment is we filled that gap of almost like a starting point. You wanna foster arts and culture. You actually have to start with the artist, right? You have to make them feel comfortable with creating, with putting what they created out there, whether it's feeling comfortable putting it out there because you feel it's adequately priced or because you adequately are marketing it or because you're choosing to in, be involved in programs that fit your business, mm -hmm. right? And, and so we feel that with this studio. When he talks about, I'm curating this exhibit, an artist comes to us and that's what December 9th is. An artist comes to us and they say, hey, I've got this idea for this show. And our response is, how do we make it happen? Or how can we help you make it happen? So is that typical? Because kind of looking over the application, initially it seemed very much like one night a week or one 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 night a month. But from the list that you shared and kind of explaining a bit more, is it typical for, so you plan out kind of these yep. once a month events, but then fill in yep. additional events yep. and so offerings as what, artists approach and, and come up with events. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. What we discovered as a board was that we needed to have like these main pieces, this consistency of community presence and offerings so that people knew that we were there, mm -hmm. and, you know, and what have you. But last October, Napoli's Lounge came to us and they said, can we host coming out, coming together at Sage? And I said, here's a set of keys. And it went so well. We were hands off other than to assist them in promotion, to be there if they needed us for purposes of like when they were doing artists, art drop-offs or art pickups. But other than that, we left it up to them for what they needed to do for their show. We simply functioned as mentor, host, making sure that everything went awful. And that went so well that we said, look at how much more we can do if we allow the artists that creative freedom and keys, <laughs> essentially. If you had to estimate, like just like a monthly average of how many events or, or days that that space is activated through either the pre-programmed monthly events or other artists and organizations coming in and activating that space, how many days? Like how not nearly days? enough in my mind, um, but I would say of a thirty-day month or you know whatever. Let's just knock it down to a work week, twelve to fifteen. Uh, we want it to be more. We truly do. Like it, it, it's just one of those things. Like um, recent conversations include um, contacting Photo Op down in Appleton, right? So they do classes on how to develop film and film photography or pinhole cameras and stuff like that. Hey guys, want to come up to Green Bay and do a class up here? We don't charge you to use our space. You know, you can do it however you want. We just want a film photography class, you know, and contacting like Sadie, for example, back in June or something and saying, hey, Sadie, you guys want to do an Oneida art show in November? How, you know, how can we facilitate that? Like reaching, right? We learn, oh, Daniel, yeah, Daniel Meinhart. So UWGB, Daniel Meinhart came to us a month ago now. They do an open studio. That's really like our, our point of contact. So when you look at January, 2024, Daniel Meinhardt came to us and said, hey, I want to do something on the science of gender. And I want to do it out in the community. I want to get it out of this school and into the community so that the community can participate in it. And I said, we got nothing scheduled in January. Do you want the whole month? And he flipped and he's like, oh, we can do this and we can do this and we can do this. I mean, his mind went crazy because suddenly he had the physical location to execute his ideas and on his terms. So this is going to be January 2024. Multiple days, though. Yep. Okay. Yeah, because it, it reads right now as what? <laughs> no, no. Um, it's like the whole month because we don't have it solidified yet. Okay. Um. So it's it's going to be like 
opportunities for community conversation, opportunities for lecture, opportunities for art exhibits. I know he mentioned working with Allison Gates because they've done stuff before. Um, you know, and then at the same time, he's saying, well, you know, UWGB has this natural history museum and we can invite artists to come out there and they can sketch all of our specimens. He's like, please, you know, bring them, you know, what have you. And so like, we end up with these, these collaborative partnerships because we're available. Um, and that's March, every weekend in March of 2024, we will have a solo exhibit from an artist with disabilities. Working with Aspiro, we really identified that though the representation of cultures is expanding in the arts and culture community, the representation of artists with disabilities is not at the same rate. So we said, take the studio. And in the process, Pete, who I met from Aspiro, hands me two rolled collections of illustrations. And this is just an example of what these individuals do. So he does like almost like architectural renderings with different types of rulers. So he just has hundreds of these sketches of houses in different shapes, different pen colors or what have you. But we get an opportunity to frame those, to put them up on the wall and to share Pete, who coincidentally has two brothers who are artists. And now he gets his moment. Virtual commissioners, do any of you have initial thoughts or questions? I did receive scores from some of you. Yeah, Laura. Um, it, my, my only thought, you know, the application was really focused around covering the rent. And I think the rent is the vessel, you know, by, by which some of this stuff is done. I think, you know, my preference would be to actually tie it to the programming. Uh, I don't think council's intent was to, you know, use this as a as a rent grant. It was really the the art grant, right? And it sounds like they're doing a lot of tremendous programming. So my question would be if there'd be any objection to kind of just restructuring this a little bit uh, to say in, in a, you know, round numbers, I, I think we ought to just give the max 10,000. We're so close with that ask anyway. Uh, and just and just tie it to say, uh, you know, the deliverable is is 20 programs uh, available to the public, as an example, uh, looking maybe for just a little bit more discussion around that perspective versus just a straight up rent grant, because my fear with the rent grant is you do that and then there's no obligation or commitment afterwards to actually deliver the art programming. So. Um, well, just real quick, a point of order. Are we going to go into kind of discussion? Are we closing the floor? I would keep the floor open in case you have further questions. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and I appreciate that question, Chair. I, I'm really kind of posturing that, I guess, for our speakers, if there would be opposition to maybe a commitment on a number of, of program deliverables. Yes, are, are you requesting that I itemize how much each of those deliverables would cost by like breaking down the amount no. of or just- No, no. I'm, as, as an example, Stacy, just for round math, uh, you know, let's say if we said, well, we'll, we'll award you a $10,000 grant, you just have to deliver 20 events. That's $500 an event. Okay. All right. I don't need all the expenses personally. I, I, you know, you, uh, respectfully, I have, Brian, you don't need them, but this is a federal grant. And so I think right. the issue here would be bringing it in line with the grant guidelines. Um, so yep, right, what I hear you saying is you'd like them to resubmit this grant adhering more closely to that. No, I think we can. I think we can award it if if the majority were to agree to that. Uh, we, we we can do this where it's just host the event five hundred dollars, and I think we can still meet that grant requirement. But I would definitely defer to staff who are better experts on that front because we've done that with other types of programs too. Alex, uh, yes, um, I want to thank the the folks at Sage. Um, we have. The first Latino event is called Estamos Aquí. That's coming up September 16th. Um, when the Latino community was uh, wondering, well, where do we create our artwork? Sage was the first one to step up and create actually an art gallery for Casa Alba, a nonprofit organization. Um, that uh, uh, Casa Alba's uh, gallery is going to be part of the Estamos Aquí event. And um, so, um, it, for the uh, Latino community, there's trust and respect for this organization, um, something that we need to support. Um, 
and um, uh, I'm all for supporting them. Hey, Ken? I'd like to uh, echo some of Brian's sentiments in regard to what the um, application looks like and reads. Um, definitely the money is going to good use. It sounds like the programming and exhibitions that uh, Sage is putting on, they, they're, they're not, there's not a barrier to cost. Um, so that's, that's really great. And that's in line with public art. Um, so I think I would suggest we look into that idea. And if we have to associate a dollar value with whatever amount of exhibits that are proposed, I think that makes sense. And that could uh, satisfy the requirement. Um, I'd also encourage Sage to consider how do we bring that artwork into a more public sphere? Like, is there discussion or programs that uh, put some of those initiatives on the street? And um, if so, like, how could we how could we could further that more? Yeah, the, the, I'm sorry. And that's where the novel steps in. We've partnered with Sage for the last four years on the toy maker. Uh, programming and we've had an open dialogue as to again some of these larger projects as they've been building momentum where could again that transition happen where it's at Sage but then also can travel to the Neville. We've, it's been very successful with the toy maker component every holiday season. Um, we have work at ADRC, um, Casa Alba posted or you know showcased what was made like with the intention of traveling getting it out. Aspiro starts with us, but ends at their annual Tastes and Toasts fundraiser, for example. The Hinterland event, we bring the toy maker to Hinterland. Um, yeah, so so there's there's decent uh, community visibility outside of our studio, yes. Is is there anything outside, like visible without barrier of entry, or is it is it all primarily inside uh, buildings? I don't think of going into a building as a barrier to entry if it's free and open to the public. I do. I mean, from, okay. yeah, as from a sculptor. the foundation, yeah, as you're going inside of a space. Not everyone feels you know comfortable going into hinterland. So just in, I, I totally understand and I accept that uh, being in a building isn't doesn't exclude it from being public art. It totally is. However, going inside of a building is my. I think uh, generally considered a one form of barrier because you have to go inside. Not then, everyone feels welcome in all buildings. And I would say we sponsored a mural during Mural and Busker Festival this year. We put a mural in Pulaski last year. Uh, I mean, basically those types of opportunities and those exterior types of <coughs> are collaborative effort on the part of the organizations who choose to work with us. You know, whether it's reaching out to on Broadway and saying, will you, you know, help us put this mural up so that we can mentor youth to do a project, um, you know, uh, I think we're out there. We were in the okay. Brown County Library just last Saturday, you know, and I know that's in a building, but, you know, th those efforts to to reach as many individuals as we possibly can outside of our studio, I do believe are present. I was in St. John's Park working with the homeless last year. That's outdoors. Well, and you also mm -hmm. heard with, um, when you did with EJ, the farmer's market. Yeah, we were out at the farmer's markets. We've done, you know, I mean, over the years, 2019, we were at every night market from Broadway. That's good. Um, I, hearing I'd you like talk to... about those things and just to continue this point about being outside, Katie, sorry. Um, well, I'd here... like to steer the conversation a slightly different direction unless you want, because it sounds like there's no question that Sage does great work. Or do no, you want to finish I'm, up with yeah, your Yeah, I, I just want to make a point that um, hearing you speak to outdoor projects uh, makes me feel more confident in the requirements towards just accessibility and public art that you're continuing to do that. So I just want to make that mention. Go ahead, Kitty. Thank you. Um, so I'll just reiterate, uh, I think there's no question that Sage does excellent work. My issues with this grant or with the grant or the application itself, I, I had a really hard time kind of pulling out what the projects were. And I, I'm glad for Laura's summary because I see there's those three things, but I would like to respectfully ask that you resubmit this grant with a clearer focus on projects. And you know, you in response to the project outcomes, I share your mixed emotions, but like this is a federal grant and we have to show what we did. And so saying like, well, if one person comes, that's cool. I don't feel comfortable funding almost $10,000 if the criteria is like who shows up, whatever. So like, could it be more like Brian was saying, we're gonna do 
eight exhibits, we anticipate, no guarantees, you know, 10 to 40 people. Um, similarly, there's somewhere in the grant that says, you know, you all estimate that over half your artists are at below whatever the household income. I think if you're going to put that estimate in paper, there needs to be some sort of evidence behind it, or I would not make that claim. So I, again, I want you all to have this money, and I'm certain that you will. But for me, the application as it stands is a little like, it's all about rent and about your story, but it's not about projects. And I think we need it to be about projects. I also mentioned to Laura that one of the ineligible projects listed in our guidelines is rent. I think that that is, as she said, maybe specific to individual artists, but since we are specifically funding something that is listed as ineligible, I would like this application to be a little tighter and kind of like a solid yes. So that's where I am with, again, not your work, but just this request for this amount of money. Um, and I'll just, while I have the floor, say to Kent, I think that our public arts minds need to let go of the idea of outdoors equaling public, right? Because a lot of artists make work that it can't be outdoors, like the zines, which were fabulous, by the way. Thanks for hosting that. Um, so just have my two cents there. Chuck, we haven't heard from you. Do you have thoughts on this? I have the same thought in regards to being ineligible projects, but when I read that, I was hesitant at first, and then as I looked through what they were describing, and ultimately seeing that they're a nonprofit, and yes, they're saying that it's rent, but for anyone that's not federally minded for, for writing grants, it could have been reworded, but however, I understood their intention, and I, got myself over the hurdle of rent uh, because of the fact that the actual cost for all these programs come to the cost of the venue, right? Because everything is, um, like they said, they have a lot of people who just are volunteers so they don't get paid. There's no overhead costs, right? So it's the cost of the venue. So if you're gonna say, okay, this is our, this is our program for 2023, 2024, this is, we, it could be worded where we say, yes, this is the program and it's gonna cost us $800 to run this program because that's how much it's gonna cost for the venue, right? And it would be the same thing as saying, okay, we got to pay the rent, right? But then when I looked at it as the cost of these programs is the cost of the venue, right? Then, it's not technically rent anymore because it's not a personal rent where they're living there, but it's the cost of the venue for running these programs. Um, and, and so I, I, I kind of, I, I initially had the same thought about the rent issue. And then eventually I just said, wait, it's, I understand the intent of it and the wording of it. And I, I get what, you know, I had the same thought that, uh, Alderman jo Johnson was uh, saying before. So, but I, I think in the end, we could have it reworded, but I understood it enough at this stage where it, where I, where I correlated it. So I didn't have, I guess, I don't have as much reservations on it um, as I initially did. So, but I, I do agree, I, I like, you know, with everybody, this is great work that they do here. And I think uh, it, it, unfortunately, everything that they do is tied to the venue that they have. Well, not not everything, but the programs proposed. It sounds like they're doing a lot of work with nonprofits. Yeah. And then uh, they can. Uh, yep. Yeah, so could this money fund. fund that? I mean, again, that would be a totally different grant. But yeah. Sadie, would you like to weigh in? Or sorry, Chuck, were you done? Sure. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I just want to start by saying that our um, Oneida Nation Arts Program is excited to work with SAGE. Um, we're going to collaborate and um, create an exhibit in November. And I personally have been involved with SAGE now for two years. Um, when I was reading over their grant application, I did um, have the same kind of thoughts as some of you about rent um, and how it was excluded from the the grant guidelines as an in, ineligible in, in um, funding source. So um, I 
but I understand what Sage is doing, and I have no question in my mind that the funding will go toward their programming. You know, they'll be able to spend more time and resources with their programming because they won't have to worry about the the rent bill. So I, I do get it, and I don't have any question that it will go towards um you know making their programming better. But I also understand what Brian was saying about maybe laying it out a little differently, maybe submitting some sort of amendment where you know the programs are mentioned as being covered um instead of the rent. So I'm you know. I agree with both of you guys on both sides of the conversation. Wait, who does? Thank you, Sadie. Chair, can I just offer up a point of information? Um, the, simply it, like suggesting that the money go towards the programming and not rent doesn't mean that the money can't be used for rent, right? Correct. So it's a suggestion that we're creating an outcome or deliverable um, on the art or the programming they're paid for that. And then if they internally choose to use that money to pay their rent, they can do that. But at least for us, it gives us the deliverable and the outcome by saying we paid for program X, Y, Z. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Are you, okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, based on what Brian's saying, uh, could we, Sage, would you all consider resubmitting a project description portion that just lists those projects instead of the narrative about how Sage formed? Because I think that that is seems like a really important part of your story and the work you do, but it, there's not none of the projects that you all do, sh or I don't think so, show up there. So maybe the project could, description could just be like, we do artists in residence with nonprofits. We've worked with these, you know, eight people. We're hosting like all the stuff that you've told us. If that were in the project description, to me, that makes a big difference in how this application comes across. Sure. Sure. I mean, I have no problem re rewording any of this and 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 monetize, you know monetizing programs as opposed to the venue itself. That's fine because obviously that program has the cost of the venue, and and that's what what we're working with. So I mean, I I think the end goal is still the same um, for us in receiving these dollars. So I I see no issue. You uh, if I may. Uh... Please. There's always, there's always been a challenge uh, for the underrepresented community and for Sage to step up and be that advocate for the community. Um, all we're all we're discussing that right here is semantics, but we all agree that uh, what they do is important for our community. And it sounds like uh, we don't have to wait for resubmission. It's just adding that addendum, and I think we should make a decision. I would like yeah, to absolutely. see it resubmitted respectfully um, and uh, semantics, but also I think if SAGE is going to be sustainable, this application would not get funded at a national level respectfully, not because the work's not good, but because it doesn't speak to the project requirements or to the application requirements. And so I think learning to write a really bomber solid grant is an excellent thing for an arts organization, especially one that is mentoring other artists in sustainable business practices. So again, the work is solid. Everyone wants it to happen. And maybe it is semantics, but I think there's like form matters, right? Because if this is going to be sustainable, it needs to be sustainable. And so anyway, I'll get off that. Other thoughts? Carol has something to say. As the seasoned bureaucrat at the table, uh, I can I agree this application reads as rent, period. And that was not the intent. I think Alder Johnson's corrupted counsel. But everyone here understands <clears throat> these programs have all different kinds of elements. So it's a matter of how you write this grant, right? I think it could be, Katie, to meet um, your requirement. I think this body could approve the funding contingent on the, re the receipt of this new updated application. You know, if you're confident that staff can review that and make sure that it covers those things, then it wouldn't have to come back to the PAC in a month. So I think you could do that contingent on the resubmittal of that grant application. That's Cheryl, that's kind like of, a... is, is that we could do that and have staff, uh, you know, kind of compare it against the guidelines and just report it back to the PAC. So well, I think the broad point is, do we all, do we approve of the funding and then let staff handle the application details? Yeah, I mean, that, I I'd think... be happy to see it reported out. Sorry, Katie, did, yeah. did you say that again? I said I'd be happy to see it reported out as Brian proposed. So Laura and crew could review the resubmission, check it for the things issues we've mentioned, and then let us know. Thank and you. funding would be contingent on the resubmission. Yep. Alex? Uh, motion to close the floor. Second. All in favor? 
All right. Aye. Aye. Call opposed. All right, floor is closed. Alex, you want to carry on? Um, just whatever was said earlier. I I make motion, motion to, to accept the. Okay, go ahead, Brian. I'll make a motion to authorize ten thousand uh, dollars, which was the max for the program. So ten thousand dollars, and refer to staff to draft an application that is in compliance with the ARPA federal guidelines, and report back to the PAC when that application has been authorized. I have concerns about us awarding more than is requested for one applicant when we have not done that for anyone else. Can you explain why this would be an exception? Uh, it's a couple hundred dollars we haven't more. Done that for, yeah, but why haven't and, we done that for anyone else? Well, we could have. Okay, well, thank you, Brian, but like, I, in terms of protocol, like why, if they didn't ask for that? Uh, yeah, it's just it, keep it, the number as is, their rent and then I think once they align it with their programs they'll quickly realize they could ask for a lot more than ten thousand. so I think once they work with staff and tighten up that application uh I, I I think it's more than deserving of another couple hundred bucks so uh and I appreciate your protocol comment uh however uh that's my motion and and uh you know of course it's contingent or subject to a second but uh that's the motion that I wish to make can I make an amendment to your motion that we let the applicant make that change instead of making it as council or commission? Uh, well, my motion- A friendly amendment, a friendly, friendly amendment to your motion. You can say yes or no to the friendly okay. amendment. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say no because then that's what forces it to come back. So I, I'd rather just leave it at 10,000. Okay. Again, still There's subject- motion on the floor. Yeah, so. seconds, anyone? Second. Okay. Is that is that a second that I heard? Yes. Okay, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. The motion passes. And so to clarify, Sage will be um, working with staff to redraft the application um, up to ten thousand dollars. Yes, correct. And staff will report out at our next meeting. Please. Congratulations, Sage. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your thoughtful considerations. Laura, I believe that brings us to F, coordinator's report and project updates. Yes. Sorry, I just writing down the notes of that motion. <laughs> For uh, coordinator's report, informational updates. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, you. Um, well, appreciate it. All of our rotating our pieces for this season are installed. Just working on getting our signage up at both sites. Uh, annual grant program, not annual grant program, public art grant program. Um, there's definitely a lot of interest from, from the arts community. Definitely feel free to keep sharing out that opportunity with artists, creatives that you know. Um, they can certainly come call me, email me. I would gladly talk about the program some more as we still have funding for that. Um, our Mason Street Bridge murals are up and all finished now. Yeah, so if you haven't gone and checked them out yet, definitely give them a peek. Uh, are we working on our unveiling of some sort? Uh, I'm not sure. I think so. In the fall, maybe. Okay, I'm wondering about that. We have to code them yet. There will probably be some sort of unveiling invitation to y'all when that happens. Uh, in addition, our Farland Park uh, sculpture RFP is live. Um, so that is on our website. I believe I sent an email out to all of you. I hope that you had shared it out. Um, if you did not get that, please let me know. I will send you another link to share out. Um, and then once those close with purchasing, we'll be having a review committee and then discussing that at next month's meeting. And then lastly, as far as recording on stuff, um, Art Fest happened last month uh, and we took part in a few ways. We had a pop-up city hall, during Art Fest, and then we also assisted with the clay mural that is um, being handled by Downtown Green Bay and will be installed on DPW's ramp wall on Walnut. 
Um, we had over 800 participants take part in that, that project, um, mostly on the first day, actually carving and, and kind of working with the clay, um, and then additional 100 or so the, the second day with painting that. Tentative installation for that right now is being kind of scheduled for October. Um, Keith is the, the main artist working on that right now and is very busy wrapping that up, but tentatively installing for October. Other than that, our next meeting is going to be September 27th, 2023. Same time, same place, same channel. Thank you. And thanks as always for all the work you do to make this meeting possible and all the art possible. Thank you guys for all of your insight and comments and evaluation. Motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The meeting is adjourned. See you all in September.